Hi, I'm Harvey Hahn. I'm a cardiologist. I'm going to be talking today about how to take the dye out of diet or which diet reigns supreme. Let's start with math. No one likes math, but I think we have to start here. Suppose you have 10 chocolate bars and you eat nine. What do you have now? Probably diabetes. Now, this kind of underlines how important diet is to our overall health. Here's a great proverb. When diet's wrong, medicine is of no use. When diet's correct, medicine is of no need. And this is actually true. Food is medicine. Now here's a great quote by Dean Ornish, who's famous beyond the cover of Newsweek and talked about how your diet, your lifestyle, can make a huge impact on your health. He said, think about it. Heart disease and diabetes, which account for more deaths in the US and worldwide than everything else combined are completely preventable by making comprehensive lifestyle changes without drugs or surgery. Do you think you can have that kind of impact on your health? Maybe you don't, but actually it's true, you can. Let's start thinking about the bookends here. Which way is easier? Making daily choices about what you eat or having me and my partners do an invasive cardiac procedure on you? Which one would you rather have done? The crazy thing is some people would actually want the procedure. A lot of people would take a pill or a procedure or in surgery rather than make a simple choice every day because they do not want to change their lifestyle. Now, there are so many different diets uh, that we can choose from. And, and this leads to what we call analysis paralysis or basically just confusion. You don't know what to pick. So we have like low fat Dean Ornish. We have this whole group, which is the high fat, low carb. And that's Atkins, Paleo, Keto. We have the plant-based vegan option. Then we have the more kind of what we call like a balanced dash or Mediterranean version. Now, is there some things that are right in the center that all these agree with? You'd be surprised, but there are. And that's where I think a lot of people should start. Now, how effective these diet programs are have actually been studied. Now, in this study, they looked at Atkins, Weight Watchers, and some other studies. And what they found is no matter what program you pick, the average weight loss is only 10 pounds per year. Now, most people would not be satisfied with 10 pound weight loss. So if you pick one of these kind of diets, you don't, and you should not expect a huge weight loss. Some people get it, some people don't, but overall average, it's 10 pounds, not very impressive. So what's better? Let's talk not just about diets, but about food itself, which is probably the most important thing we're gonna talk about here. Now, is an apple better than applesauce? Better than apple juice? Yeah, we can all know that. We're not sure why, we will talk about why, but we all feel that way. Is corn on the cob better than canned corn? Which is obviously better than high fructose corn syrup. Now, why is that? As we process foods more and more and more, we strip away the nutrients and we add in preservatives and chemicals. We don't want preservatives and chemicals. We want more of those nutrients. So the more whole food, unprocessed stuff we eat, the more nutritious and healthy it is for us. And that's really important in the US diet. If you look at this graph, 63% of what Americans eat is called processed or ultra processed food. That means it's in a bag, a cup, or a package. So it's been preserved, processed, which means sugar, salt, and fat have been added to it, so we like it and we buy it again. And you it's very cheap, but they still make a ton of money on this. This is why they do it. Now, when we look at this, it's not going to war or playing with a toy, but looking at the GI or glycemic index. And as you can see, white bread is a high GI food, then there's whole wheat bread, and then there's salad, which is a low GI food. Low glycemic index, small sugar spike, small insulin spike, small weight gain. High GI foods, big sugar spike, big insulin spike to push the sugar in, bigger weight gain. And what you can see is the more process you get, white bread, white pasta, croissants, etc., higher sugar, higher insulin, higher weight gain. The more unprocessed, basically raw foods, nuts, salad, whole grain breads, the better off you're going to be. Now, this was actually studied um, and easily shown that if you have a high glycemic index diet, you gain the most weight. But if you had a high protein, low glycemic index diet, you actually lost a little bit of weight. 
Right. So glycemic index is important. Now, a lot of people, especially when you go to the Atkins, paleo, or keto group, they're totally against carbs. Carbs are bad. Now, there's good fats and bad fats, but there's also good carbs and bad carbs. There's a great study from a small tribe in South America who is now considered to have the healthiest blood vessels in the world. They went down there and they CT scanned their coronary arteries. And what they found on average is that basically their population was 20, 28 years younger than a typical American of the same age. So if you had um, a 28 year old tribesman down South Africa, they had the arteries of a baby, of a one year old. Their diet, 70% carbs. But their carbs were fruits and veggies, unprocessed, mostly raw or cooked a little bit. It wasn't this processed carb, high sugar stuff that a lot of Americans eat. Big difference there. Now, what did Grok do? Anyone know who Grok is? So he's a little caveman dancing um, for the paleo people. But when you look at the graph on the left, the little food pyramid, what you can see on the bottom, the foundation of the paleo diet is fruits and veggies. So they're really also a whole food plant-based diet. Everyone likes to focus on the fat and the meat because that's what they like to eat. But the biggest part of even that diet is the same. It's whole food plant-based. Now, here's a really nice graphic about eating meat and your mortality. Basically, on the left of this line, every time you reduce a daily red meat serving by fish, low-fat dairy, legumes, which are beans, poultry, whole grains, or nuts, that's the reduction you get in mortality. Eating nuts for protein instead of meat drops your mortality by 19%. Now, having said that, if you add an extra meat serving, or worse yet, a processed meat serving like bacon, sausage, pepperoni, et cetera, you can increase your mortality by 20%. Huge impact by what you eat. Now, a lot of people say, uh, that's observational. It's not, doesn't mean anything. What's the mechanism? Well, we now know what the mechanism is. Now, I'm gonna show you this in the next picture. What we have basically is if you eat meat products, it has something in it called L-carnitine. That gets digested by the gut bacteria and it's made in TMA. TMA goes in the bloodstream, goes to the liver, gets converted to TMAO. That goes to your blood vessels, damages your blood vessels, makes the grunge, and makes your arteries narrow, which will eventually lead to a heart attack, stroke, or other problems, lack of blood from your limbs, amputations, etc. Now, they also in this study did something really clever. They blocked this pathway two different ways. The first way, they gave antibiotics and killed all the bacteria. You have the bacteria, you can't convert L-carnitine to TMA. So you cannot make TMAO. Now, the second way they did it is they just had people not eat meat. When you don't eat meat, your body is not getting L-carnitine, and so the gut cannot take any L-carnitine and convert it to TMA. So you don't get any TMAO. So I don't know what you wanna do, but you can either decide not to eat meat, or you can take antibiotics all the time and give yourself diarrhea and avoid this whole process there is an easier way, and that's by changing your diet. Now, I'm a cardiologist, but don't just listen to me. There's other cardiologists who believe this. Here's a great quote. There are two kinds of cardiologists, vegans and those who have not read the data. This is Kim Williams, who used to be past president of the American Heart Association, which is our biggest um, medical group that supports cardiology. What happened is he was at a conference and checked his cholesterol, and it was elevated, and he was shocked. So he actually walked around a little bit more, came back, checked it again. It was still elevated. Then he started doing some research and he figured out the best way to get his cholesterol down wasn't taking a medication. It was changing his lifestyle. He went vegan. I think he lost 35 or 40 pounds and then his cholesterol totally normalized without medication. All right, so don't just take my word for it. Take Kim Williams and the data that we're looking at. Now, a lot of people... They like to eat meat, but they also feel that if I don't eat meat, I'm not going to perform well in sports. That's just not true. Here's a, a quick example I want to show. Here's Mac Dancing. He actually won Ultimate Fighter 6. That's a reality fighting show, which is mixed martial arts. And he's basically vegan. He started doing this because he had a lot of cough, allergies, and meat products, and especially dairy, increase mucus production, make more post-nasal drip, and make you cough. That's why he started. But eventually he, start, he started feeling better at his workouts, recovered quicker. So he just stayed vegan for the physical aspect of it. 
Now, the really funny thing is PETA contacted him. PETA is people for the ethical treatment of animals. They like to protect animals. So the notion here is it's okay to beat up other human beings, but don't hurt animals. Now, the next example is Scott Jurek. He's probably the most famous American ultra runner. Now, he's done a couple of crazy things. Probably the most famous thing he's done is he's won Badwater twice. Badwater is a race where you run 135 miles from the bottom of Death Valley to Mount Whitney. He's won the thing twice. All right. He's also had the record, it's since been broken, for hiking the fastest time on the whole Appalachian Trail. All right. So this guy is an incredible endurance athlete. All right. And here's a great picture of him being cooled off with just ice bags during a bad water race. Finally, Patrick Bellamon, now known as the world's strongest man. These are some of the crazy things he's done, but basically he's vegan and he's got huge muscles. He's incredibly strong. The idea is if you wanna get strong like an ox, don't eat an ox, eat like an ox. Oxes eat grass. Now, the other thing that's really interesting is if you go vegan or plant-based, it has a huge impact on your cholesterol, just like uh, Dr. Kim Williams experienced himself. But here's a randomized study. They had two groups. One group was taking Mevacor, which is a generic statin medication, which lowers your cholesterol. The other group just went vegan. And what you can see that within two weeks, both groups had the same 30% reduction in their bad LDL cholesterol. And that was maintained up to four weeks later. So you have a very quick, significant drop in your cholesterol by just changing your diet. The same as you would if you took a medication. So for those of you that don't want medications, don't want pills, this is a really good way to think about how to change your health status. Now, here's another way to look at it. So there's a little cartoon here. The doctor, I'm just going to read through this. The doctor says, you have two choices. We can perform a triple bypass surgery where you take a vein out of your thigh, open up your chest, and sew the vein into your coronary artery. This costs over $100,000 and will keep you laid up for two months. Or we can put you on a vegan diet. And the patient says, a vegan diet? Gee, doc, that sounds pretty extreme. Think of back at the first couple of slides we talked about. What are the choices? What's the easy choice? What's the hard choice? What's the extreme choice? What's the more reasonable choice? People don't want to have big, massive surgeries. You can avoid that by making little choices every day on what you eat. Here's some great plant-based references. First on the left is a book called The China Study, which documents the impact of... Um, your diet, especially a plant-based vegan diet, on cancer, heart disease, et cetera. The middle is a movie called Game Changers. This is a great movie talking about how you can be vegan, plant-based, and still do excellent in competitive sports. Actually, Tennessee Titans, the NFL football team, multiple players are profiled in this movie, and they're all vegan. Finally, probably the most famous movie is something called Forks Over Knives, talking about how what you eat in the fork is more important than what a surgeon can do with the scalpel. And this book, movie is loosely based on the book, The China Study. I recommend all three of these to you. Now, just because you're vegetarian or vegan doesn't mean you're healthy. You can do it wrong. Now, this study actually looked at the quality of your plant-based or non-plant-based diet. And what they found was it was more important on what the quality of the food was, not if you categorize it as plant-based or not. There's a lot of really bad plant-based foods, potato chips, soft drinks, candy. They have no real meat products in there, uh, but they're really bad for you. Those are the ultra-processed bad carbs. And you can be a, have a really bad plant-based diet if you choose those foods. So quality is really important. Now, where you can find these quality foods, basically all the good whole, um, whole plant-based foods around the edge of the supermarket. And that's because they don't live that long. Um, they don't have a long shelf life. They need to be restocked. If you think about like fruits and veggies, they'll go rotten. So they need to have the easy access for the store to replenish those. Now in the middle of the store, those are things that are like preserved, salted, fat, sugar, can be stored in boxes, cans. Those things are not the best for you. Are those foods in the middle good for anything? Yeah, prepping for the zombie apocalypse. Now also looking at what foods can make you gain weight or lose weight. What's interesting on the top of this graph, we have potato chips, 
potatoes or fries, processed meats, unprocessed red meats, butter, sweet desserts, refined grain. Those are things that in three different studies showed weight gain. The things that showed weight loss, vegetables, nuts, whole grains, less processed, fruits and yogurt. So by what you eat has a huge impact, not only on your weight, but also on your overall health. So if you look at the totality of all the evidence we've looked at, what kind of common themes can we find between all these different diets we talked about? One is whole food plant-based. That's probably the most important thing. Paleo, all these diets, they all agree. Less processed food, whole foods. And these are typically the bad carbs, potato chips, et cetera. Less sugar, which is also a bad carb. Sugar is one of the worst things in the American diet. Also, most of these programs, even paleo, they want you to limit the red meat. My suggestion is go plant-based vegan. Also, there's good fats. Don't go high fat, go good fat. Avocado, nuts, those are really good for you. And also, there's good carbs. The best carbs probably are fruit. Fruit is like nature's dessert. It's really sweet. Once you detox off of candy bars and um, soda pop, when you eat like a Fuji apple, you can't believe how sweet, how good that thing tastes. So in the final analysis here, there's a review article looking at all these different types of diets, and they had two big things here. One is the compatible elements, the things that overlapped in all the diets. Limited refined starches, added sugars, processed foods, limited intake of certain fats, emphasis on whole plant foods with or without lean meats, fish, poultry, or seafood. So you don't need meat, fish, poultry, or seafood in your diet. And the final thing, to boil it all down to a little tagline, they said, eat food, not too much, mostly plants, and that's the healthiest way to go. I'd like to kind of finish up with a Bible verse here. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. All right, the habits we have, the things we love to eat, they should not control us. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 12. Finally, good luck, everyone. We talked a lot about what to eat. In the next episode, we're going to talk about when to eat, and that's going to be talking about intermittent fasting. Thank you for listening.